about Ruby um, programming and um, uh, so for those uh, videos um, yeah maybe just first uh, give you a brief uh, introduction and uh, let's to uh, test it but the basic thing you already got there right and uh, how to create object and how to create a class and uh, how to use some variables and the basic cooperation about uh, uh, using the uh, Ruby uh, Ruby my right so let me make sure I'm taking a recording yeah it works okay so yeah here uh, let's go through uh, maybe not all the details because of uh, uh, we do not have enough time and uh, still uh, let's go through some details so I already show you how to install Ruby and here I want to say that in Ruby everything is like object and all values are object even some numbers and uh, so uh, if you want to uh, have our uh, class we need to create and then if you want to use uh, we need to uh, instantiate uh, create the object and uh, uh, also we know that in OP or uh, already learned some languages maybe Java or C++ is class based and everything is like a class and uh, here is uh, something special you see uh, in Ruby uh, it is dynamically typed and that means uh, um, we don't have to declare uh, the for some variable we don't have to declare the type and uh, uh, also the for the method, you don't have to see the return type. And uh, um, if in the, I mean, in the method body, the implementation for this method, if it, it returns a boolean, and then uh, the return value is a boolean. If it's integer, if it's double, it would be integer or double. And um, that means uh, um, the compiler don't have to check if the return value and the value you really return is does match or not. And um, so it will do the runtime inspection so that means it's dynamic right and uh, we can change even we can change the classes during the execution um, and uh, also something like um, yeah here uh, also say something like a server side uh, ruby uh, on rails and but on this class we we can only talk about the basic Ruby. Um, actually, Ruby on Rails is uh, very important for server-side web applications. You know, you can do something uh, on internet, and uh, yeah, it would be very useful. Uh, but um, if you learn some basics about Ruby, I think later if you want to learn Ruby on Rails, it uh, would be easier for you. And uh, here <laughs> we have some, um, yeah, this is like matrix. Uh, yeah, you see on this column, this column, dynamically typed and statistic, uh, st statically typed. And uh, for functional, you know, we have two categories. For functional languages like Racket or SML, and for object-oriented programming languages, Ruby and Java, you see, yeah, this is, um, yeah, give you some uh, uh, some sense about which one is dynamic type, which is a static type, and uh, which one is a functional and which one is object oriented. You, we can see here Ruby and Java, um, they are um, both object oriented programming, but Ruby is dynamic type and uh, Java is statically typed. We know that in Java we need to uh, declare as a variable uh, all for the method. We need to uh, declare the uh, mod, uh, specify the return type for a method, right? And also need to check if uh, the return type uh, really is the return type is required. So, um, and um, also we can see here, uh, yeah, the racket or something. Yeah, is racket is a kind of it, it is not racket. Racket is kind of language. Um, and also Ruby is a kind of language we know that uh, actually Racket has uh, classes and objects so uh, if we want we can do it but if we do not want we can just do the uh, functional uh, functionals as a basic uh, programming but for Ruby actually everything is uh, um, 
OP. And uh, also another thing, you see some small, <laughs> uh, this one, small talk. Actually, this is the uh, first OP language. It's uh, very famous. It's very small, but very powerful. Um, and um, Ruby, also you can see it's very simple and more than useful because it's OP. It's easier to uh, can do some systematically uh, programming. Um, Okay, the rules uh, about uh, class-based OP, right? Uh, Ruby, actually, <laughs> we refer to Ruby, and I uh, already told you that Ruby, everything is an object, and uh, uh, so if you want to use some uh, uh, methods or we want to access some, uh, actually, we cannot access the uh, the variables in the. Um, in the Ruby in Ruby class, because every actually every instance variable uh, is uh, private, and uh, also uh, I want to say you see here uh, the state uh, each object has its own state. Actually, state uh, is um, in Java we call it member, right? Member members can include. Uh, like method and uh, instance variable. So here, state refers to the uh, ob uh, refers to the um, instance variables and uh, method. Uh, it's a kind of combination, right? Combination of uh, all the instance variables, and uh, every object is uh, an instance of a class. We know that. So if we want to use a class, we need to uh, do it through object. But actually, also we can do something like. Um, uh, if we have a class variable, we can still have access. So, but every object definitely is an instance of a class. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, here about behavior, uh, we can connect this uh, concept with uh, method, right? So, if we want to do something, we need to talk about the method and the method how to call it, how to define the method. Um, but here uh, we can see uh, Java. Yeah, do not follow this one. <laughs> follow uh, like some numbers or some nouns. So we cannot call them as an object. But here uh, also um, in Java we can have uh, non-private state. We can have public uh, variable, and then that means uh, uh, that um, variable can be accessed. Uh, in uh, publicly, yeah, globally, uh, we can see. Uh, this is a syntax. This is a format how to uh, define a class. And also in the class, we want to this class. Uh, if we can create some object, we want some object that can do something. Do something. You see here, uh, method one, method two gives a name and then list the arguments. And also here, list the arguments. Actually, we can give a list. Give a list how to uh, do. Uh, actually, we can keep the parentheses also uh, either way. I mean, uh, even we can do it without parentheses. But um, between different arguments, we need to put a uh, uh, comma to separate them. Um, okay, yeah. Um, return uh, statement. Uh, actually, uh, we don't have to uh, say return, but uh, uh, suppose we want to return like uh, a variable here. We just uh, say something. Yeah, uh, var maybe the name for the variable is var, and uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, let me write it uh, var. Just write. I don't have to write the return keyword. Uh, so how to create a new class? Actually, last time already, uh, on the last, uh, uh, the last one, the video actually already show you. But today, uh, let me show you again. So let's go to uh, which one? <laughs> yeah, let me quit the switch to this one. Okay, let me check if uh, still taking recording or not. Yeah, yeah still. Okay, so uh, yeah, maybe I can keep it here, right? If you do not mind. <laughs> 
you know, later if you want you can write comment uh, below my post uh, so here yeah actually last time we use this one hello.rb and today uh, we are going to uh, use this file and uh, already put the, uh, the code over here I don't have to type in order to save some time and uh, initially you see here we cannot find how to write it here if we click the, the this button it will write hello but if you want to run this file we need to uh, do this one right click on the uh, yeah, on this side, right? Yeah, actually, this is the list of the the structure, <laughs> structure, uh, structure view of the whole um, project. So we can run it, right? So it's uh, finished, and then uh, later, if you want to uh, write like um, I, yeah. So yeah, let me check it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, continue. So here, I want to show you that uh, if you want to write like uh, uh, use uh, the console, IRB console, interactive uh, Ruby console. So we need to do this way. Uh, first, we need to load. You see, before we don't have to load, right, for the hello.rb because uh, uh, before we only have one Ruby uh, file in the whole project but here we have another one then if you want to write like uh, uh, for this one we need to load uh, you see put the Ruby name and then it says oh it's true that means it can be loaded and then later if you want to create um, an object uh, we can do this way yeah I mean on the last uh, uh, video I only show you use a and then a new and then put parentheses like a constructor invo invocation but here actually after we create the object we can use a variable to uh, the variable is a right a can reference to uh, this new object actually um, okay so let's see what uh, does this uh, program do uh, and uh, what does a do class a do actually I have class b also later we can call it um, so actually in this file I only uh, give the definition for all the classes and later if you want to write we can use I R B and uh, here yeah like uh, I already show you the syntax uh, the definition uh, for class A and then uh, remember this end uh, yeah close here with class A and also for uh, some method uh, M1 M2 and uh, yeah, M2, right? So remember, ain't. And also, uh, here, this is M1, it's a method name. And uh, this is a return, actually, only return uh, 34. Only uh, return 34. <laughs> and very simple, right? So here, um, can do M2 and also X and Y. Actually, um, this is okay and also some students may ask oh um, do we need the semicolon actually a semicolon doesn't matter if you want to use it you can use it but um, yeah uh, only if you put uh, you see a new line uh, a return and then on two lines uh, the compiler Ruby uh, we consider as uh, two um, yeah two part uh, not one line right <laughs> two lines of the code so but in Indenting um, doesn't matter only for us to make the um, make the program beautiful, and uh, also here something I want to say. Actually, this one can explain why the Ruby is uh, uh, dynamic, dynamically typed. Because here you see on this condition uh, we return false. Actually, false is a boolean value, and uh, this one. Yeah, actually, this is a number. So boolean value and the number, uh, they are different types. Um, but here, you, know, you don't have to uh, give uh, the return uh, type for this method M2. Uh, so uh, let's do something. Um, yeah, let's try this one, right? Uh, so here, uh, yeah, actually here, I already create A. So A, how to access the, uh, the method? Yeah, we just put uh, uh, a.m1 just simply return 34 and then uh, how about this one m dot uh, 
M2 and then uh, 3 and uh, 4 um, yeah something like this right so still yeah M2 and uh, M2 34 31 why we get 31 why we get 31 because uh, uh, 3 is less than uh, 4 so need to go to else condition 3 plus 4 times 7 uh, is 31 right 4 times 7 is 28 plus 3 is 31 yeah that's good how about we do this way um, go the other way m2 and 4 and uh, 3 yeah let's do this one maybe we can also put something like this right yeah so for three, uh, actually, no, we cannot do this one. Um, okay, yeah, sometimes uh, it works, but in this mine, um, Ruby mine is not working, so we get first. So we can see that for the uh, in Ruby, we can see sometimes can return a number like 31, sometimes can return a Force uh, like uh, uh, for force like a boolean value because it's a dynamic uh, a dynamic type, right? Um, okay, let's see if we can explain this one. Oh no, yeah. After I explain about uh, self, uh, we will use this uh, class. Uh, okay, yeah. Already show you, right? So. Let me keep this one. Okay, so we see that uh, we can put E, right? We know that uh, suppose we have, uh, but just now I just use A and I call M1, that means A dot M1. Data for M2, we can have some arguments uh, like this, right? Um, so here, uh, yeah, the local. Uh, what does local variable mean? Local variable means uh, it only uh, has it only. I mean, has its life cycle uh, in a scope. So, what is the scope for a local variable? Uh, so, in this case, let me show you in our program actually for uh, for the right Z actually it only has definition until. Um, yeah, in this one, in this method, in M2 method, because when it touches end, it, uh, the life cycle is ended. Okay, and um, something else? Nope. Yeah, and also uh, variables are mutable, and here, <laughs> be careful, because if we do this assignment, also it's called uh, alias, alias, actually, uh, they both, uh, if E is object to of uh, class, so we, we say A, and then if we make this assignment, X equal to E, that means they both, they um, point to reference to the same uh, same object. So later, if you change anything for E, you change the same thing uh, for X. Uh, uh, and also, if you change, um, yeah, the same thing. Actually, they point to the same object, right? And also, self is a special keyword. And uh, here, uh, it's very similar like this in C and Java. Um, but, uh, here, let me show you something even more interesting. And uh, let's see um, in this one. And, uh, uh, okay, let's go class B, right? So I can create uh, class B. Class B equal to uh, B dot new. So now, uh, actually, I do not use constructor. So, yeah. Uh, actually it's created and this is a, a memory address and tier if I want to uh, do something like b dot um, uh, b dot what uh, b dot m1 right so b dot m1 and uh, also here you see b dot m1 actually is 4 that means uh, uh, you see it's 4 and also here, uh, we use self. Uh, that means a current object. We'll call this master. M1 will return 4. M1 return 4. Uh, also, if we call M3. So let me call M3. B 
dot m3 and uh, let's follow um, like um, uh, this is uh, to um, get absolute value so uh, now I put minus 2 that means absolute value is 2 2 times 2 is 4 4 plus uh, 4 here a value is 2 4 is 8 right so that means we should get return 8 so yeah this is how it works and also here yeah self you see it's more interesting let me create a c dot new so yeah that's it and uh, let's try uh, something uh, interesting uh, actually let me do this one and c um, dot m1 right c dot m1 what can we get so c dot m1 we get uh, the print like uh, high right and then uh, if we get uh, and also not only print high actually it can, can also return a uh, can also you see can also return a, an object an object so if I do this one since uh, c dot m1 return object and then I can call some methods through this object right so if I call m2 yeah so it will do like uh, first uh, call m1 and then call m2 high by and then if I call c dot m1 dot m2 dot m3 dot, uh, dot m3 right dot m1 dot m2 dot uh, m3 okay so you see actually m3 uh, on this uh, console you can see actually can create a new line so this is about uh, self right okay hopefully through this example you can understand what is uh, um, yeah self and uh, also here uh, you know that the state, uh, state. Uh, I mean, for some values uh, of the instance variables can be changed, right? For the object. So, um, and uh, also here, uh, if uh, uh, we want to have access from after site uh, to access the the instance variable, we should use a getter or setter. Uh, getter to uh, access it and the setter to change it right and uh, here uh, yeah actually last time on the last video I already used uh, the add symbol right this this symbol yeah add symbol uh, so that means uh, uh, this is a uh, starting actually we see this one that means follows uh, the name of uh, instance variable and also later if you make like uh, add foo, food or food uh, or something um, that means you create a new uh, instance variable be careful eh? yeah and but uh, if uh, um, if we do not uh, we uh, I mean if we have this uh, this variable but we do not use it and then it will produce a new uh, object later I will show you and uh, just now I already explained the uh, aliens right x and y they point to the same thing if we change y object that means we are also change x uh, and also initialize actually initialize is uh, uh, something uh, like uh, do you remember uh, what does uh, the initialized uh, how to initialize uh, something for an object yeah how to we need to use uh, constructor right okay let me show you to see if I can find an example yeah okay uh, yeah I think I find the example yeah I found the example uh, let's uh, use this one right so that means we need to load uh, this uh, uh, Ruby file again classes uh, objects uh, let's see if we can load it uh, so yeah let me see first let me run this one and, uh, to see if we can load it and uh, also yeah to see ah oh, pew dot rb yes 
sometimes, yeah, true, okay, it can be loaded. So let's say if we can create uh, class E, E equal to E dot uh, new, right? Okay, so it's created, and uh, here, uh, let me show you this one. Actually, this part is very uh, similar to um, constructor in uh, C++ or Java, and here we call it an initialization. And also, uh, it's like a function, right, like key. But uh, actually, uh, yeah, even in C++ or Java, the constructor is a special method, but still it's a method, but here uh, it's a method, yeah, it's still, <laughs> um, yeah, still it's uh, special because uh, if we create some object through the, uh, like use parentheses, put argument, um, that means we want to invoke the constructor. Yeah, actually this this function will be called. And uh, here, uh, yeah, so you see it's like F. Uh, and uh, later, actually let me put E1 dot E, uh, not dot E, so E dot new, and then uh, what do you want? Uh, let's put three, right? So if we put three and then we get it, and uh, also, yeah, at foo, at foo, this instance variable, you see this is a state for this uh, variable, uh, not only show the address, and also we use at foo to represent the instance variable, and the value is uh, 3, because we initialize like 3, and before the default value was uh, 0, right, because uh, here, yeah, actually we can do this one, and uh, uh, let me put uh, e2, e dot new, and uh, that's it, right? Still, it's uh, zero, the default value, even we do not put it. But here also we can say, oh, I don't want zero, I want five. Okay, yeah, let's put five. And uh, also, mm, I need to, uh, yeah, load. And um, here, if I put like e3 dot uh, e dot new, and then, uh, yeah, let's see, yeah, you see? Here, even we can um, change the default value for the um, for the full instance variable, and also here for m to actually use the instance variable, and then uh, let's do this one. And uh, also, uh, how to call uh, m two? We need to call through the uh, either e two or e three, right? And then uh, e three dot m two, and then put some value like uh, uh, let's put eight, and uh, uh, e three the full is the five, so uh, it should be five. A foo, actually this one, yeah, is a shorthand for add foo plus, uh, plus x, let's do this one, right, so it's the same thing, and, uh, um, okay, yeah, let's keep the plus, my uh, equal, I don't want to change, uh, so here, yeah, uh, we should get 13, because 8, uh, 5 plus 8, 5 plus 8, x is uh, 8, right? Um, and uh, also here, yeah, um, do you want to see the full value? <laughs> Maybe we can call it like e3 out uh, full, right? So it's uh, 13 now already, right? Okay, um, let's go back to the slides. Initialization is like, um, um, uh, constructor and uh, also here uh, class variables even we can have class variables class variables we call it a static variable in Java and uh, uh, also class variables uh, in C++ uh, um, but in Java actually we uh, it's useful right it can be used to keep track of something like how many objects create us uh, if we want to have a static method we can call it uh, directly through the, um, the the class we don't have to um, create an object huh? but here almost the same thing but uh, some syntax is different you see we use double uh, colon right and uh, also here how to create a class method uh, we just do this one some special thing you see we need to put self dot self dot master name right and then suppose we have a class class name is x and then later if we want to call this method it will be the method to call uh, class method 
uh, okay yeah maybe later we can go through next slide but let's uh, go back to the to this one to see if we have uh, something let me check uh, um, class method right class method okay we need to have uh, another one let me find the, the file again okay whenever you make some change be sure to uh, uh, I mean load the file right okay we load the file is true and then let me see uh, what we can do uh, so here actually you see I put the age is like a certain age or something yeah suppose we want to have uh, F equal to F dot new right and then uh, yeah so here, actually, H, H is um, do we have H? Um, yeah, maybe we don't have to use it. Oh, let me show you something. Yeah, how to do comment? <laughs> yeah, this is how to do it. You just put hash. <laughs> yeah. So here, uh, reset, right? So yeah, because uh, for this one, uh, H is not instance variable. And um, bar actually, this is a class variable because we use double at symbol and uh, foo is uh, instance variable and foo instance variable and bar. Uh, you see here we want to do this one for foo and for bar is different and uh, uh, so yeah. Okay, let me show you something first. Uh, let's do. Uh, something like uh, f f1 right f1 equal to f dot new okay and then uh, f2 also equal to f dot new okay and then uh, f1 let me do this one reset uh, how to write? Uh, there is no suggestion. <laughs> reset bar, right? So reset bar. That means, uh, uh, yeah, the bar, the value bar should be zero. Uh, so here, yeah. No, we cannot access in this way. And then how to do? <laughs> how to access the? How to call? Yeah, actually, we need to use F, right? So because it's class, yeah, so it's zero, right? And then we can do like, uh, not capital, uh, yeah, it matters. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, the case sensitive, actually. F1 dot, um, let's see, it's uh, M2, M27, right? And then we get one. We get one. Why we got one? <laughs> because this is uh, uh, the value you see for bar actually it's the value for bar but uh, how about um, uh, C2 uh, F2 F2 dot uh, M2 uh, still if we put 9 yeah it's 2 right why we got 2 <laughs> why we got 2 because uh, you see here Actually, f two dot bar is uh, is what is two. You see, here just keep track and also it. You see why? Because we create two f one and f two two objects for f. That means two can also, yeah, keep track of uh, uh, how many. You see. Uh, not how many objects actually can keep track of uh, uh, how many M2 masters is called, right? How many times? So, um, and uh, let's check C1, not C1, F1 dot foo to see what will happen. Yeah, and uh, F2 dot foo, right? F2 dot foo is uh, 9. Why? <laughs> F1 dot foo and uh, F2 dot foo. Why? <laughs>
I'll let you think it. <laughs> you got it? Because initially you see foo is from uh, this one. Th this constructor actually foo initial value is zero and this one do foo equal to foo plus x. So initially it's zero and for f1 we put something like uh, you see here is seven. That means zero plus seven. So that's why for f1 foo f1 foo we got seven right here. And then for f2 dot foo uh, you can you can find out right oh and uh, also something we can still um, play with uh, uh, yeah let me see play with a actually I need to play with a um, not this a actually let me find another one okay Okay, <clears throat> yeah, actually, I forgot to show you one example about aliens. Uh, so, I told you x, y, and y point to the same object, but they only have the different name. This is the only different. That means we do um, something through like x dot method, and then y um, actually can change the, the state of the object, right? So, here, let me show you one example. Um, maybe we can create a uh, um, class uh, class already F right yeah let's create a class G right okay and then uh, you remember the end end or it's already uh, and, yeah added by this uh, yeah end already added right and then uh, at foo uh, equal to zero well, what does at foo mean actually it is a kind of instance variable and uh, uh, if um, yeah and also we give the uh, we give uh, this value actually when we call only if we call this method and then uh, the foo uh, value will be changed and uh, let's have uh, another one maybe f2 and also let's put the argument here and uh, uh, let's see uh, we want to do this one uh, so uh, yeah plus equal um, plus equal not plus plus uh, yeah and uh, here we need to know that if we do not have a uh, foo uh, initialized if we just uh, first we call m2 uh, it will not work it means foo has no definition right yeah and also here uh, let's create a foo uh, you see foo actually uh, can be the same name like the instance variable okay let's say I think um, yeah, very easy. And uh, let's play with this uh, example. Uh, first, what do we need to do? <laughs> yeah, whenever we change anything, be sure to load this uh, uh, Ruby file. And uh, okay, so first, uh, let me create X. Okay, X uh, G dot new, right? And then we say Y also uh, G dot new. And also, I want to have Z, but I don't want to create a new object. I just make Z and X the same. And also here is very clear, you see? The, the address, memory, actually at the same place. And uh, here, uh, if I want to do this one, X dot foo. So, not zero, zero, X dot foo. So what will happen? That means we want to call M1, and then we can, no, we cannot, we need to call m1 first, right? But here, let's call this one first, call foo. That means nil, right? It's not defined. Okay, uh, let's try this one. m2, how about m2? Oh, we get error. But how to do this one? Yeah, maybe we can do this one. You see? Um, yeah, let's do this one. z dot m1. Since x and z point to the same same thing, same place, right? So z, m1, that means foo, we already defined. So let's do the same thing like uh, x dot foo. Can we get something? It's not nil, right? Before it was nil. Do you remember? It was nil here. But here, we get something. And also let's do m, x dot m2. M2 and also we need to give the number maybe um, yeah M2 maybe uh, 5 or 3 or something but foo is 0 foo equal to foo plus uh, 5 should be 5 right 
so we get 5. Um, how about y? y dot foo. No, still nil. y dot m2 dot um, dot what? Um, not dot uh, 6. Still error, right? But here, uh, only thing is we need to uh, call m1. Then m2 like 3 and then y dot foo like this right okay that's all <laughs> let me have a rest and uh, uh, I'll let you expect uh, our next video about Ruby programming I hope you can enjoy it thank you bye bye